Sunta. Strax to Sunta. Field report TCX 11 slash 13. I must inform you of vital strategic knowledge. The universe's chief weakling and coward, the Doctor, is once again changing his fleshy appearance. Unlike the noble Sontaran race, the Doctor has worn a number of hideous faces. The Doctor's first incarnation showed great early promise, with a brutality similar to the great Field Marshal Steyer. I know now who's responsible. You are. You've sabotaged my ship. What are I you didn't talking about? Your You're the cause of this disaster. Don't be ridiculous. We were all knocked out. Oh, Sharad, you attacked us. But he was soon infected with the human disease known as compassion. The second Doctor proved of no military value whatsoever. A buffoon, more accustomed to grasping a musical toot tube than a pulse rifle, he felt the hand of Santar and justice from the Lord and Hero Stike. The third Doctor is highly commended for impressive martial abilities, a worthy opponent to command a lynx of the 5th Santaran battlefleet. But his weakling body was incapable of withstanding a dose of radiation which would barely tickle a Santaran infant clone. The fourth incarnation returned to the level of cowardice we have come to expect. Instead of facing the Santarans on the battlefield, he led them on a frivolous chase through his TARDIS, like a Rutan fleeing through an energy trench. Next, a cautionary lesson on the perils of a vegetarian diet to a warrior's constitution. The fifth doctor and his obsession with wearing vegetable matter led to weakness of mind and limpness of body. But sartorial salad could not save him, and once again, compassion for a fragile human led to his demise. The Sixth Doctor was confrontational, ruthless, and aggressive. My personal favourite. He deserved a warrior's death, but his delicate Gallifreyan cranium could not withstand a bump against his own ship's console. Doctor Seven showed great promise as a strategist, using intense cunning, guile, and plotting to outmaneuver his greatest foes. Though ultimately he failed to maneuver out of the path of a volley of speeding bullets and expired at the hands of an incompetent boy with little medical expertise. Little is known of the Eighth Doctor's exploits, except that he chose to become a female for this incarnation and engaged in the futile pursuit of romantic attachment and obsession with footwear. He gave up such pointless pastimes to become a warrior fit to fight the greatest war in history. Physician, heal thyself. From the fire of war, a new man was born. It is fortunate we never encountered this warrior who would not call himself Doctor. My clone batch still quake in their probic powering pods at the very thought of this dark soldier. The man that followed was another doctor of fire and rage. Number nine started with a strong military focus and a flair for smiting species. But his affection for a yellow-headed earth boy squandered this promise. He indulged in yet another interspecies mouth-to-mouth -mouth interface. The next incarnation was a blight on the Santaran race. <clears throat> His encounters with members of my clone batch were as insolent as they were infuriating. <laughs> this is a war! This is sport! <laughs> They've taken the factory. Why? They don't need it. Why attack now? What are they up to? Don't tell this I could do with the Brigadier. No offense. It was a delight to observe this doctor meet his doom. I took great satisfaction seeing him get it in the back of his neck. <laughs> Which brings my report up to date. The Eleventh Doctor's preoccupation with fabric helmets and neck adornments seemingly made him an easy opponent to dispatch, but he proved himself highly capable in evading the most ingenious trap ever created. And now the spineless pink weasel is backed against the wall. He'll never escape the fate that awaits him on Trenzalore. I shall not forget the many exploits of this man. He was a worthy foe and a mighty strategist. He was my enemy. He will not be easily replaced. I have a new destination. My journey is the same as yours, the same as anyone's. 
It's taken me so many years, so many lifetimes, but at last I know where I'm going. Where I've always been going. Home. The long way round.